Hey friends, it's the first day of the new year, 2023. I wanted to record a video today. I think that I'm loosely intending to record a lot of videos this year. I think I recorded maybe 15 or 20 of these kinds of chats last year and would like to do more. So uh, at the very least, it's just really helpful for me to talk at length about <clears throat> something that I'm interested in, but hopefully it's of interest to you as well. Um, so it seemed good to record a video on the first day of the new year. And what I feel interested in thinking about today is fiction, because I recently wrote a novella called Theodicy. Um, and wanted to talk about some of the process of writing that novel and how I came to choose to write a novel and what the experience of writing fiction was like for me. Um, especially because some of it was just very surprising and unexpected to me. And even writing fiction itself is kind of a new development for me and something I'd like to do more of, so that's why I'd like to reflect on it. Uh, I think, yeah, I've always loved fiction. I love stories and novels and movies as a kid and continued to as an adult. And when I was younger, I really wanted to be a writer. And at a certain point, I had the ambition to write the great American novel. Um, and was interested in being an excellent writer and writing some kind of story that was really good and everybody liked and uh, yeah, was as good as the novels and stories that I've loved so much. And I'm not even really sure why, but I eventually kind of set that dream aside. Maybe I didn't think I could do it or that I was good enough or I also started getting interested in philosophy at a certain point and nonfiction and um, a lot of the writing that I did in my 20s um, was nonfiction, lots of blog posts and essays and that kind of thing. And then earlier last year now, 2022, I, uh, found myself writing some stories. I wrote a bedtime story for Bloob and published that and also later made a video of that. And over the summer, I wrote this essay called The Dark, sort of this autobiographical piece written in the third person, uh, <clears throat> very weird piece, but uh, yeah, I was really proud of both of those pieces and they, they expressed something that I might not have been able to express through tweets or threads or essays. And, um, you know, there's something with my visual art when I draw that I'll go back and look at the drawing I made over and over again if I really like it. It's like, wow, that was really good and that resonates for me and expresses something for me and uh, the same thing happens with my writing and especially these fiction pieces where uh, I would write something and just feel like it really expressed something that I wanted to express or um, with the dark it kind of made me feel seen to myself like there was the experiences I was going through that were very difficult and painful and hard to talk about and I gave myself a way through this weird essay, a way to um, express myself and make myself feel seen to myself. And that felt really good. Uh, even if no one else understood it or liked it, I liked it and I enjoyed reading it. Um, I guess not really fiction because it was sort of autobiographical, but, um, you know, as a narrative, it was story and um, kind of indirect. It wasn't like a really clear legible blog post. It was not super legible. Um, and I also like removed a bunch of stuff that I'd written in earlier versions that was very personal to me and partly for ethical reasons that I didn't feel like it was appropriate to speak about certain people and, um, you know, things that had happened to me or ways I felt about them. But also it kind of just, I noticed when I removed those parts, like it made it a more interesting and mysterious piece for the reader, I thought. So. Um, it felt like a good decision, both ethically and creatively. 
Um, and I guess it was surprising, again, it was surprising to notice that I enjoyed these pieces so much. The bedtime story for Bloob came about just as a total accident. Like I was up late at night and I saw my mutual bloobs and nudes on Twitter. That's like blueberries and noodles. Um, although I think it's supposed to be kind of punny as well. But um, I saw her post and be like, tell me a bedtime story. And so I did. Um, I wrote it in the DMs rather than as a reply because it was, you know, sort of long form and wasn't going to fit in 280 characters. But um, I just it just came out of me to tell her this story and, um, you know, uh, really, really loved the story that ended up coming out. And I was proud of those two pieces. And then a friend of mine told me that she thought that I should write more fiction. And really, since I hadn't considered it for probably 10 years, um, yeah, I didn't intentionally intend to write a bedtime story for Blue or The Dark. They just kind of came out of me and um, specifically consciously intending to do so was a divergence for me or, or um, unexpected development, an unexpected development. And one of the things she mentioned was that she knew that I cared a lot about ethical speech and right speech and um, Buddhist right speech. And I have a blog post about that and how important that practice has been for me spiritually and ethically. And also like just for being on social media where, you know, your words can be distributed very widely, how to speak ethically and appropriately. And she knew how important that was to me. And she said um, also that because I travel a lot and I'm connected to so many people that a lot of people uh, tell me their stories and they're very private and very personal and it wouldn't be appropriate for me to say oh this person told me this story someone told me a story like this last week where it was so um, intimate and vulnerable this this thing that had happened to them in their life that was totally different from my own life experience and something i wouldn't experience at all but like it was it revealed an aspect of reality that i might not have encountered otherwise and i felt so privileged to hear this story from this person but it would be totally inappropriate of me to share that story with anyone. And at the same time, there's a wisdom in these stories and they almost want to be heard. They want to be expressed. And so fiction is a way that you can uh, express aspects of reality in a way that respects people's privacy and ethics and um, their boundaries and, and your own ethics about speech. And uh, she knew how important that was to me and also how many people were sharing their stories with me and uh, thought, oh, maybe fiction would be a way to express some of that uh, wisdom or those experiences that want to be heard and shared, but are tricky to do so directly. Um, and I was also just intrigued creatively. I, I like exploring new creative mediums. And for a while now, I've had a sense of uh, being stuck in, in my writing of like, oh, there's certain genres that I've gotten really familiar with, but I'd like to be stretching my capacities to do more things. And so uh, writing fiction seemed like an interesting idea. Uh, and then Anansi on my podcast mentioned that he had done NaNoWriMo and uh, National Novel Writing Month. Typically, you would try to write 50,000 words of a new novel in a month. And uh, I was inspired from that conversation to uh, try and do NaNoWriMo in November. Um, Oh, I guess before that as well, um, I, I, even before the novel, after the dark and before the novel last year, I started this thread of uh, little vignettes and uh, they're sort of like 280 character tweets and there's a thread of them and I've got probably like 20 of them at this point or 25 or something like that. And um, they're little short stories, very short stories. And I found that even in that short of a length that you can actually tell a really compelling story and some of them I think are quite good and interesting and that sort of exercised this muscle it felt like an easy simple uh, accessible way to exercise this new um, or unused muscle for me of telling stories and um, that kind of wet my appetite and so when Anansi recommend mentioned that he had done NaNoWriMo I was like oh yeah I should do that and I have time and in general I've been finding it a really useful frame to uh, uh, focus on one thing per month. Um, not necessarily every month or something like that, uh, but like I did that quite a bit. And I had just done Inktober in October, uh, drawing something every day. And so 
it felt good to try and do a fiction writing project. Uh, and yeah, I think what I'd like to talk about now is just kind of what the novel ended up being um, and how it came to be. It's a really unusual process and the book is um, very unusual. I've not really read anything quite like it. Um, it reminds me of Joyce to some extent and Wolf, Virginia Woolf, uh, who I love, especially The Waves. It does remind me of that a bit. It also reminds me of, there's this game I've been playing on Twitter, also a long thread of slowly establishing things, but uh, Sylvia had this tweet about like, what if you just put words together that don't make sense sort of grammatically, but then it conveys a vibe. And uh, I had been doing that for a while and I had, you know, even like 70 or 80 of those at this point and uh, almost developed a style of a certain kind of sentence that was different than normal grammatical conventional sentences, but it became kind of like an art form or a skill with writing that I developed and that I really liked. Um, I think I, I've kind of become enamored with run-on sentences over time and, you know, you're told in high school and college not to use those, have these like long-winded, complicated sentences, but I love breaking that rule and I find that um, complex ideas and experiences are really well conveyed with run-on sentences um, where you can really beautifully and almost like precisely express the nuance of an idea or an experience or a feeling or a memory or a story. And so I found myself writing almost all of the sentences in that style in the book, like very long sentences. Some of, at some points there's like multi, there's a sentences that stretch multiple paragraphs or like three paragraphs. I think that happens twice in the novella. Um, so the style is really weird. And then also the story and plot are kind of weird. Uh, and um, yeah. I wrote it in November and I was kind of thinking in the weeks leading up to it of what I was going to do. And some people put like elaborate planning into like world building and thinking about their characters and stories and so on. And I might like to do that in the future, but I didn't really want to do that this time. I just wanted to um, almost trust my heart. I noticed that uh, a lot of the writing I do, especially tweeting, but also some other things really comes from the heart and uh, trusting my body mind to know what it wants to say and just allowing that to come through. And so I wanted to see if I could do that same thing, but with fiction. And that's uh, sort of the opposite of cognitively planning what to do. I did find one article really helpful. There's this article from Lim, Liminal Warmth on Twitter, uh, where she wrote about fiction and said that your character should want something, try to get it and change in the process. And that that was like the critical component of a compelling story. And so I kept that in mind and all of the characters, I think, in the novel um, want something, try to get it and change in the process. Um, that was like in the skeleton of the book for sure. Um, but mostly I didn't really do any planning. Um, I did notice certain images that came to me, like this image of the character that was the temple priestess or um, the temple that she was in. And almost, um, yeah, I, I started to realize, oh, I want this to be connected to my parts from internal family systems. Over the years, I've done a lot of parts work or IFS and have developed a relationship with about five key parts of myself. And uh, I realized that I wanted those to be sort of the characters in the novel and I wanted to them to be expressed and go through a kind of transformation process as well. Um, and, and almost see if the book could be kind of an integration thing. So I don't know, these things were swirling around, but I also just wanted to channel what was coming through. And as part of that process on Halloween, before the month began, um, I intentionally did this kind of ceremony or ritual or even like magic spell where I, uh, amongst other things, sort of adopted the worldview that in the future, a month later, the novel had already been written. It was already done. And I just had to write it and channel it and let it come through. And so I did this sort of ceremony or ritual and uh, like almost asked it to come in and uh, invited it in and welcomed it. And then I would write most days and uh, just try to type from that place of knowing that in the future it had already been written. And that was really my experience of writing it was I wasn't sort of like consciously planning the plot or uh, 
thinking about sentence structure or like what is the character going to say now I was just letting it come through and um, you know again there were sort of th certain images or uh, ideas about stories that were informing my thinking but a lot of it was just blah, 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 um, this is coming through and that actually goes really well with this whole uh, run-on sentence style of um, that, that ended up being in the novel um, I think in the future if I I could write in the same style again. I would like that. I really enjoy it. I came to love it. And also um, I could write like that and then edit the sentences later to be more um, normal if I wanted to. Uh, that's a sort of authorial choice, I guess. But um, anyway, it worked really well for this novel. And yeah, uh, I wanted to, to have like a past and a present and a future. So there's like sort of two parts of the book in the past sort of fantasy setting and then a future almost like sci-fi setting and then there's also italics throughout the book that are sort of like in the present as I was writing the book. Um, now it's the past but uh, in the present moment as I was typing the book and um, most of it is set in the past and then uh, some of it is set in the future and some of it's set in the present as well. Um, and then the experience of writing it like very disorienting. Usually I feel just I don't have a hard time writing I write a lot and I've gotten kind of good at like writing blog posts and tweets and threads and so on. This was, um, on the one hand it was easy because I was just channeling it, but on the other hand it was actually emotionally very difficult of, um, I think on two, on two levels. One was, um, uh, you know, the style was so weird and I was like, I've never read anything like this and are people even going to like this and uh, what will they think? And I had specific people in mind that I was imagining reading it like, oh, they're going to think this is so weird. Um, and not like it and judge me for it and actually I think that was you know I mentioned I had this dream as a teenager of writing the great American novel and I almost had to like I had like pushed that away for many years and I had to like welcome that back in and it was very much a teenager mind of like do people like me am I valuable am I worthwhile and like that was emotionally still online in in contact with uh, in connection with writing fiction and um, I had to reintegrate that almost and um yeah, my teenage self was like very social conscious, socially conscious, socially anxious, uh, you know, didn't like myself, was worried about whether other people liked me. And so writing this really weird novel in this weird style that I hadn't seen anyone write before was like kind of triggering for him. Um, and I had to, I had a lot of inner critic stuff come up, which usually doesn't come up for me. Usually I'm very kind to myself in my mind, but um, yeah, a lot of like, oh, this isn't very good. Nobody's going to like this. This specific person isn't going to like it whatever. And thankfully that kind of was assuaged in that <clears throat> something that I found helped was there were like three or four people that I read the novel to during the month and would read sections of it and just without fail I would read sections of it to these people who I really respected and loved and um, they would uh, be like no this is good I love this this is amazing and kind of validate what I was writing and that kind of set me at ease. Um, so thanks to the people that did that and um, that helped a lot. And then uh, and then as publication approach, this was sort of the other part was um, that was hard was uh, I had to decide whether I wanted to publish it or not. Like separate of whether people would like it or not on a like aesthetic level, there was also would they understand it or accept it on, a, on like a content level. And um, I had some worries about it being read well or charitably uh, over the years as a reader i've really cultivated the ability to read charitably of like what is this author trying to say where are they coming from what's their perspective and even if i disagree with them or don't like what they're saying i can kind of yeah have theory of mind about it and like kind of understand why they would say what they are saying or why they would feel the way they're feeling why they're expressing themselves the way they chose to even if it's not my cup of tea or something like that or i disagree with something some point they're making i can still say oh yeah it makes sense that they would write it this way or say this thing or what have you. So I know what it's like to read charitably, but there's no guarantee as a writer that your reader is going to read what you write charitably. And this was such a vulnerable, intimate piece for me, because again, it was about parts of myself. And, um, you know, on the surface level, <clears throat> the most obvious thing I was worried about was there's a section that's um, sort of erotic. And it's about this part of me that I, I call the hedonist. And he loves sex and sensuality and play. And um, I, I'm, I'm pretty okay with him being there, but showing that part to other people was really vulnerable. And um, uh, 
uh, I don't know, when I wrote that chapter, I just, I was aroused and I was just like, okay, I'm going to write the thing that would be arousing for this part of me in that moment. And so kind of channeling that. And um, I was like, kind of afraid that on the one hand, people would not like that there's basically erotica in the novel, but also that they would, um, I don't know, over index on the particular fantasy I happened to write that day that I wrote the thing. It's like, kind of an elaborate fantasy and it's like very specific and like my in my actual sex life like the sex that I have isn't really like the thing that I describe and um isn't really what I actually want in my real life as an adult that's sexually active um and I was afraid people would miss that of like this is just a part of me and it's what he happened to want in this fictional setting in the moment I wrote the thing uh and uh yeah, you can read for yourself and see what you think if you want. But um, yeah, that was a part of it. And then uh, the other part is like, okay, well, the sex is fine. That, that that actually wasn't that big of a deal. But more broadly, the same kind of shape of thing was happening. And like, would... Yeah, like I was revealing my inner psyche, but through this particular way of these fictionalized characters that were like parts of me, but aren't exactly parts of me. And like channeling them in a world that's not really like our world in a setting that's not really like our world it's almost like a dream in the past and it's like yeah these are these are like refractions of myself um but like it's not me either and so I would worry that people would uh I don't know I've heard I just remembered all of these conversations I heard in high school or college about books and people saying this or that about different stories or authors and like just from people have wild interpretations of books and like I know in me, in my experience, what this book means to me and how to interpret it for me. And like, that's very precious to me. It's very dear to me and it's very intimate because it's about who I am and how my psyche works and um, sort of refractions of uh, specific things that happened to me in my life. And that process was very healing for me. And the idea that someone would um, you know, just wildly misinterpret who I am because of this fictionalized version of myself uh, was almost had this like disgust reflex of I don't want that um, and so I had to decide as the the book you know kind of approached being finished uh, what did I want to do with it did I just want to keep it just for me or share it with some friends or you know typically with my projects I, I, I publish them quite widely and freely available and put creative commons licenses on them and uh, I had to decide what to do and I think what I eventually settled on was a kind of an unusual model of, I was gonna give it away for free to my patrons and, um, you know, just thank them for it and put a, put a content warning on it. Like, hey, there's both sex and violence in here and also run on sentences. That was kind of a joke, but just the style is really weird. So good luck with that. Um, <clears throat> but uh, uh, yeah, so freely available to my patrons, but I wanted to put a paywall on it for people outside of you know sort of my network of people who don't already know who I am or who aren't supporting me of like hey if you want to read it it costs money and I put $25 on it which kind of felt like a lot like a bit of a barrier to reading the book and like I would hoped that that would dissuade uncharitable readers from reading it um and you know it's nice it's been nice to make a little money on the book but it wasn't wasn't primarily about that um it was just like hey I almost need this like this is to respect my boundary if I don't want this book to be easily misinterpreted um, by people that aren't very charitable or kind reading it. Um, and then I also decided to put a Creative Commons license on it. So once people get a copy, either from being my patron or from buying it, they can distribute it however they want. Um, they, you know, it's non-commercial uh, attribution share like 4.0, which I, I like. Um, so they can't sell it, um, but they can share it and distribute it as long as they say, hey, that Toshin wrote this. Um, and that felt really good. I, I love Creative Commons. It's been um, a beautiful thing for me and um, want to put my projects out available with Creative Commons licenses where possible. Um, so that was kind of unusual. If it's Creative Commons license, it's free for my patrons and there's a paywall for people who aren't my patrons. Um, and then I've also given it to friends for free. So uh, that's been nice. And uh, if you're watching this and you've made it this far and 25 is prohibitive for you, uh, let me know and I'm, you know, you can maybe ask about getting it for free. The money is not so important to me. Um, 
and since I released it, uh, you know, it's been so healing to have people read it. And just generally the response has been very favorable. Like a lot of readers have written and it almost immediately said, oh, it made me cry. And I felt really healing to read it. And I loved that all these parts were welcomed and accepted. And, um, you know, people didn't mind the weird style and uh, even liked it a lot. And in a few cases, again, I've like read it out loud to people or uh, had conversations with people about what it meant to them and just felt really seen by that. And, um, and then almost could see that even though this teenage part of me that wanted to write the great American novel was worried about it because it was such a weird book. I was like, no, actually, this is really good, Tashin. Like, this is a good novel and uh, I like it anyway. And other people seem to like it and uh, be able to kind of take in that information of, oh, even though this is weird and unusual, like it's kind of awesome actually. And um, alongside Bloob and The Dark, I think it's one of the things I'm uh, really proud of having written last year. Um, also the forgiveness piece I wrote, but that's not fiction. Um, and actually it ended up being the second book that I published last year because I published The Path of Love on Loving Kindness, which is also quite good. And um, then I published The Odyssey. And uh, yeah, I mean, The Path of Love is kind of like technical and uh, does have some stories in it, but it's, it's not a fictional book. So this felt like a, a really new thing for me. And um, yeah, going forward, I'd love to write more fiction and um, maybe uh, I'll do NaNoWriMo again. I'm not sure. I would definitely want to keep going with that thread of vignettes. And uh, yeah, maybe I'll write another novel in the future. I want to learn more about craft and how to tell stories well and almost like how to do so formulaically, like learn the formula and like how things work because I kind of have not so much knowledge of those things. And I think that probably shows through in The Odyssey. Um, but not that you need that, but and it's like helpful information, I think. Uh, for like I'll, I'll, The way I work, it will be helpful and I'll just kind of digest it and integrate it. And then I'll still do something that's authentic to me and uh, a story that actually resonates for me, but it'll be stronger for knowing that information. And uh, I want to learn more about that kind of thing if I get the opportunity. And... Yeah, I might record an audiobook of Theodicy at some point. At first, um, well, it, it, it's, I experience it as beautiful to be read out loud and the sentences uh, want to be read out loud. On the other hand, I didn't like the idea of especially reading the erotica chapter out loud because then there would be recordings of my voice saying these like very sexual things. And uh, I don't mind that in itself, but then I was worried about it being distributed or remixed or something. And then, and then recently I thought, oh, I could, if I do an audiobook, I could uh, launch it with a no derivatives license of uh, non-commercial share alike attribution, not no derivatives. So someone couldn't like make a music video of my voice saying these like really sexual things or something. Um, yeah, I just, I wouldn't feel comfortable with someone remixing it in that way. Like in general, I like remixes, but that just, it just feels way too vulnerable to share in that way. Um, so I think that would respect my boundaries and still also make it so that I could have a recording that people could listen to and hear me saying these like really complicated but beautiful, in my opinion, sentences. Um, so I don't know, I'm not committing to doing that, but uh, that is something I'd be interested in doing. I'm kind of curious how long it would take to read the book out loud. I have read it all aloud to one person before, but that was in chunks. Um, I think it'd probably take like two or three hours or something. Uh, so I need a place to like this to kind of record with quiet and so on. And um, yeah, also lots of water and that kind of thing. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm interested in doing that and just in general interested in writing more fiction and learning more about it. And uh, I feel excited about what will happen if I just kind of keep exercising these muscles over time. I've been really pleased with the stories I've written so far and hope to write more in the future. So. In any case, thanks for listening to all this. Um, if you enjoyed listening to this, I'd love it if you checked out A Bedtime Story for Bloob, or The Dark, or my thread of vignettes, or The Odyssey. And uh, if you do check them out, let me know what you think. And uh, do try to read them charitably. Be nice, you know, be kind. Uh, it's, it's a vulnerable thing to put creative, active expression out there. And um, even if you don't like it, you know, you can just stop reading it or something. But uh, yeah, it's, it's precious to me and um, the art of artists is precious to them and be, be respectful about that sort of thing. But I would love to hear what you think 
and I uh, hope you enjoy it and that it's interesting to you. So thanks for listening and uh, we'll talk more this year, I suppose. Thanks.